one of the things that we've found really frustration is our perceived inability to get our message across to the media and that's why we're demonstrating starting outside the BBC. You were all over us during COVID. You wanted to interview nurses because they'd been looking after patients that were dying in the ITUs. You wanted, you wanted us to do vlogs so that you could broadcast them. You engineered the clap for carers when you had the same health workers outside your corporation telling you that the NHS is on its knees, that we cannot carry on like this, that we need a pay rise to save the NHS, and you aren't covering it. Something is shockingly wrong with the press in this country. So that's why we're here. We're holding out. It's two minutes out of your offices down here. You've been an absolute disgrace. You should be ashamed of yourselves. We lost 640 health workers because of COVID. We're standing outside the BBC now because you've completely dropped us. On the 5th of April, one of my colleagues wrote on Facebook that she goes to work fearing for her life, that they don't care enough about PPE. And on the 5th of May, she died. She was the mother of two teenage daughters. Seeing the hearses carrying the bodies of two dear colleagues driving past our hospital so we could pay our respects was one of the most emotionally raw things I've ever had to experience. NHS workers have been through hell dealing with COVID. We deserve a pay rise. This wasn't just work as usual. We are all exhausted. We've worked twice as hard as usual and the emotional burden of what we've been through is huge. Witnessing the distress of our patients and going through the grief of losing dear colleagues. The nurses and the doctors and other healthcare workers on the ward, even in some ITUs, were wearing these masks. Show everyone what we were wearing. In central London, we've been quite lucky in terms of our PPE, but going around different hospitals. I've spoken to various staff in critical care in the wards. I've heard that they weren't fit tested to wear an FFP3 mask and were given these expired masks from eight years ago and they all caught COVID. Enough is enough! Enough is enough! Enough is enough! Enough is enough! I've personally never been fit tested and I've been wearing a mask like this all night on nights and I will be expected to wear this again until somebody has definitely proven COVID and it's just not good enough. What do we want? Hey, right. When do we want it? Now! What do we want? We should be paid properly. How can we be expected to work through a second wave when we're physically and emotionally exhausted and on top of that we're worrying about paying our bills? It's routine for a 12 hour shift to stretch into 13 hours, 14 hours, 15 hours or without a break. As a single parent I've always had to work two bank shifts every month to pay for my childcare. That is tiring. We need our time off to recover. Our work is hard. Five, two, three, four, five. Keep our NHS alive. What do we want? When do we want it? This is not just a fight for pay. It's a fight for the NHS itself. Because if NHS staff cannot live on their pay, they leave. If pay is poor, the NHS cannot attract staff through the door. Patients die when there's staffing shortages. Here I over. 100,000 vacancies across the NHS, but more so in mental health. We have lost 10% of the nursing workforce in 10 years. The staff shortages meant that the NHS was completely unprepared for the pandemic. Mark Walpole from SAGE, the Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies, said that we are on the edge of losing control, and that is terrifying for anyone who works in the NHS. Winter is a horrible time. Last year, it was 5,549 people died on trolleys alone. And these are the problems we've been dealing with in the NHS for years now, because of austerity and privatization. Our NHS has a trustworthy blue and white logo, behind which lurk leeches, parasites, and corporates who daily strip the dignity of health workers and erode the service. The Health and Social Care Act that was introduced in 2012, that has split the NHS up into 40 different trusts and made it so hard to actually do anything functional. We've seen that with the track and trace. We've seen it with the testing failures. We've seen that outsourcing doesn't work because there's no communication and people who are organizing these roles don't have a clue what they're doing. One, two, three, four, five! Keep our NHS alive! One, two, three, four, five! Keep our NHS alive! We all are late.
labelled as these NHS heroes, but at the end of the day, we're human beings and we have family and friends that love us. So why should we stand for this anymore? I love my job. I didn't go into nursing for the pay, but I didn't go into it for this pain either. The pain of counselling, ward activities, escorted leave, because there were not enough of us. Of seeing patients transferred miles away from home because there were not enough beds. Of seeing them deteriorate as they stagnate on a waiting list. Leaving a shift upset because I could not provide the care that my patients deserved. The pain of seeing how COVID-19 has impacted the nation's mental health and knowing that we simply do not have the resources to cope with the demand. Our patients will benefit from us getting a pay rise a lot more than we will. This is why we are here. Thank you. Let's look at what this campaign has achieved already. You have convinced two major trade unions in this country to back the demand for 15%. That's huge. That's significant. We have seen the union over the last 10 years in our workplaces moribund. They presided over privatisation, watching us get cuts in pay. What I've seen in the last four months is rebuilding the strength of the union on the shop floor, in the hospitals. I'm a privatised worker, outsourced. We've had to go out on strike at least three times since 1997 to win just some semblance of what our brothers and sisters have in terms of pay and conditions in the NHS. They say that there is not enough money. This is at a time when hundreds of millions of pounds have been devoted to getting people back into restaurants. More than a hundred billion pounds on bailing out huge corporations, £200 billion devoted to Trident for the next 20 years. The money is there, they are just not providing it to NHS or the NHS staff. So yes, we are well within our rights to protest for fair pay. We deserve a fair pay. 